Hey everybody! So today I am getting ready for a Christmas party slash it's my birthday party my mom's having it. thought I would do a little bit of a get ready with me, get to know me type of video. So I hope you guys enjoy. I am all bare faced for everyone to see so let's get some makeup on this face, okay? Welcome to the pimple life. I probably won't go into super detail on the products I'm using just because I want to be able to focus on kind of chatting. If you need to know what I'm using, I'll leave it down below in the bottom bar. So make sure to expand that and check it out. I'll also put my social media. If you like what you see, I would really love it if you could subscribe and like and comment and maybe even set up notifications by hitting the little bell. That would be great. So if you would like to get ready with me, then just keep watching. First I'm going to take off my ring because I do not want to get that full of makeup. Got my Starbucks chai tea. I'm going to moisturize. I have a little sample of the Glam Glow Volcasmic Matte moisturizer. I mentioned in my last video that I have like an oily t-zone and then a combination everywhere else. If I don't have dry patches, like usually I get them along here, it gets dry. Then my skin everywhere but my t-zones. Oh, this smells good. Pretty normal. I'm just gonna let that sink in for a minute. I'm gonna moisturize my lips. I'm gonna use the Jouer Essential Lip Enhancer Conditioning Lip Treatment. I got this with some of the Jouer lip stuff. Hmm. Okay, I've never used that before. Um, pretty nice. So while I let that sink in, I'm gonna let you know that I am using stuff from my BoxyCharm. Today I got this Be Fearless, Be Limitless, Real Her blush palette. It's really pretty, so I'll probably use that today. And then I also got a little bronzer palette. So that's pretty. We're gonna try to use that today. And then I also got a full size of the Tardiest Tarte Mascara. I've been using this, I really like it. I think it lengthens and it's really nice. It was this one. So it's kind of a small foundation brush, I would say. I also got this lipstick. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the lipstick or not. It's really pretty, but I'm not sure if it's going to go with the look I'm kind of going for. It's going to sparkly, kind of, you know, sparkles as usual. I love using sparkles, especially for holidays and going out and stuff. Oh, love using sparkles. So, oh, that's synced into the skin nicely. It feels pretty hydrated. It's not like sticky, but it's not like mm, ultra smooth or anything. Oh, ooh. let me tie back my hair. It's gonna get in the way. My little cat ears. I am going to prep my skin with the Farsali Unicorn Essence Drops. I just got these. Um, I did buy the little baby sample. I ran out of it and I loved it. So when Sephora had their $25 off sale, that's what I used it towards. And I'm just gonna, gonna pat this into the skin. And that stuff does get kind of sticky. It smells like fruity vanilla type of deal and then over top I'm going to prime with the I have a little sample of the Estee Lauder the smoother universal perfecting primer I've used this a couple times I really like it but I do have some enlarged pores in my cheek area and under my chin that I definitely want to conceal we're going to just smooth this in, pressing in. All right, so that's pretty smooth. I don't know if you can tell any difference in the pores after that primer. So I am gonna be using a new foundation, but I'm gonna be mixing it with another foundation. I'm gonna be using, I have a little sample. This is kinda gonna be a little sample video, trying out some new stuff, of the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation in the shade Buff. 
to be mixing the Laura Mercier foundation with a little bit of the Jouer Essential Full Coverage foundation in the shade Porcelain. And this is a little light, so I'm just going to be mixing it with the Laura Mercier just to make sure I get a good amount of coverage. I don't know, brush. I got it with the Jouer Full Coverage Foundation. I'll put a little on the back of my hand. Ooh, this is thick. Whoa. Whoa. Look at this. Like, can you see? It's like... Wow, it's really thick. Okay. It came. Especially compared to the Jouer Foundation, this stuff is like water and it's super full coverage. So, that's fine. I'm just gonna mix a couple drops, maybe like half a pump of the Jouer foundation. Whoa, mix that up. Whoa, that Laura Mercier is dark. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna put in a couple more drops of the Jouer just cause that Laura Mercier buff color is really dark. I don't even know if I can wear that to be honest. It looks like it's oxidizing a little bit on my hand. Okay, I'm gonna mix in a couple drops. Mm, dang it. I'm gonna mix in a couple drops of the NYX Total Control Cover Drops in light. Just because I really do need to lighten this up a little bit. I think that'll help. Uh, it's better. Just a couple drops of that did some good. drops for a little extra coverage of the Jouer. Okay, and then I'm just gonna tap over that with my beauty blender just to make sure everything's blended. This is actually the Morphe sponge. It is not a beauty. A booty blender. I'm probably gonna go in with my eyes now so that in case I mess up or I need to clean it up a little bit, I can do that with concealer. Oh, I have a little sample, another little sample of the Smashbox Photo Finish Lid Primer in Light. I've never tried this before. Usually I prefer the MAC Painterly Paint Pot or I use concealer too. If you just, if you have a concealer that you like that covers your veins on your eyes, that's really the most important part. And most of the time concealers are made not to crease, so it's kind of the same thing. I'm gonna be using this primer because I have a sample and I haven't tried it yet. So we are going to put that on our eyes. Wow, this is light. This is like darker than my skin tone, but that's fine. So then I'm just gonna take my fingers I don't have any nails on right now, and I'm just going to excuse my nails, by the way. We're letting them grow out. So to set that, today I'm going to be using the Kylie Cosmetics The Bronze Palette. If you've never seen it, it looks like this. I kind of want to do like a dark brown smoky eye with like a nice light glitter on the inner corner. So. We're gonna be using this. I'm gonna be using the brown shades around here. Now that my face is done, we can maybe start chatting a little bit while I do the eyes. For those of you that don't know, I did just get married in February. I was Pernitz and now I'm Edgerton, which is cool. I do have a job right now. My title is Branch Operations Manager. I work for a staffing company. My husband, Ian. If you follow me on social media or if you know me, you probably know Ian. He's awesome and he's my husband. <laughs> so we live in Arizona. I'm freezing and it's like 60 degrees. I was born in Wisconsin so it's kind of funny that I'm freezing in 60 degree weather. That's what happens when you move somewhere warm and live there for 20 years. I have been watching YouTube videos for about six years and have learned most of what I do on my channel. 
I have learned from watching YouTube videos. So if you are watching this and you don't really know how to do makeup, just practice and watch and learn different techniques and you'll get there. You'll get there. So I'm just building this color up in my crease while we chat. I am a super Harry Potter nerd. We actually got engaged at Harry Potter World. That was in 2014. We went to Harry Potter World in December for my birthday. My birthday is December 17th. Ian wasn't working at the time, so I really wasn't expecting him to propose. We just had this trip planned for a while and we had like a package. We were at Harry Potter World and it was the first day and we had a really nice dinner planned anyways. We bought wands. It was awesome. We were going around and hitting all the cool spots. While we were there, there's like marked places where you like move your wand a certain way and something happens and then there's like some unmarked places as well. Anyways, he had this whole thing planned. He had the stupid ring in his pocket the entire day. I had no idea. But told me to like make a Z in the air and he like even looked up like the Harry Potter spell word for love. So I'm out there and I'm like going like this with my wand, you know. I'm like nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. So I'm turning around to tell him but nothing's happening. He's down on one knee. So it was really cool. There was people around and they were all super excited. And one guy came up. He was like, oh my gosh, I saw the whole thing. I was the victim. And he was like, oh no, no. I was the witness. He gave us a big hug. It was so funny. And then a lady like had a baby, like she's carrying, you know, on one of those carriers and she's just like, oh my gosh, can I take your picture? So she took our picture and about 20 minutes later, I'm on the phone with my mom and I'm like telling her that Ian proposed. My mom loves Ian. My mom loves Ian. He, she like loves him more than me sometimes, I think. He's nicer than me though, so I mean, I get it. Anyways, I was on the phone with my mom telling her that we just got engaged and I'm like looking at my hand, you know, I'm over here looking at my hand and my ring was on the right hand and not the left hand and I was just so excited that I was just like, yes, and I put out my dominant hand and it's just kind of how it went. It's a little story of how we got engaged. Very cute. Very fun. It was a very fun day. After that, Ian and I had a longer engagement. It was about two years. I'm not in any hurry to have babies at this point. I really don't want children for a couple years. So we had a long engagement. I mean, I pretty much had everything planned before, like at least five or six months beforehand. So that was nice. Everything was like a slow go. We booked the venue really far in advance, like a year and a half ahead. So it was just really nice not to have to like scramble and worry about everything um, and just like enjoy the fiance stage like you know people I feel like get married so quickly nowadays and it's like don't you want to just enjoy being fiance you're never gonna be fiancés anymore you know so that's what we did and it was really nice there was no pressure by the time the wedding had come like we were just so ready to be married at that point so if you're engaged and you're feeling pressure just take your time there's nothing wrong with having a long engagement if you're not with anybody don't be discouraged um i did not find ian until i was 22 almost. I had no boyfriends before that and sometimes if you just wait for the right person it will all work out. Don't be too eager to grow up because it's hard being an adult. Most of the time you have no idea what you're doing. Everything's crumbling around you most of the time and you just kind of gotta keep it together it's hard it's hard being an adult so if you're a kid stay a kid as long as you can stay a kid as long as you can stay in school 
Um, I'm just kind of gradually going in. Now I'm taking a little bit of a thinner brush. It's kind of stained from when I do my green looks. Bad part about the white hair brushes. But the Morphe brushes actually do clean up pretty well. I mean, considering like I had really dark green eyeshadow on that, it cleaned up pretty well. So basically I'm going to take a really dark brown and I'm going to start buffing it on the side over here. I actually might go in with a pencil brush and pack that on and then blend it out. Ian and I have been married since February, so we're coming up on our one year anniversary. We did have a nice honeymoon. Um, for our wedding, we did a honey fund. We didn't really register for gifts or anything like that. We just registered for things for our honeymoon. There's like websites that actually set this stuff up. And basically you can add items like dinners, um, people can contribute to your flight ticket. We did rent a car so you know you can put that stuff in there. We knew that we wanted to go to Europe. We kind of threw in like things that we knew we wanted to do, like Harry Potter uh, studio, so that somebody could like you know purchase that for you. They don't actually purchase the item for you. They actually just pay what you say the value is of that item, where they can contribute like twenty dollars towards that item, or fifty dollars, or a hundred dollars, whatever you like set it for. It's the website transfers the money to you. There is a fee for people who pay credit card or by card instead of like sending you a check. I had a trick where we had a savings account specially for it and every time I would get a notification that somebody would send us a gift, I would open it. I hate surprises. I would open them early. You can set it to do that or not. I would transfer the money into a, the savings account, but I would transfer the entire balance. So if the person gave me $100, even though I only got $97 in my bank account, I would still put $100 into the honey fund. I think that really like helped. And also, maybe if I didn't have a chance to put any money in there, at least like I'm slowly putting money in there. And it worked out really well actually. We got a really good amount of money. So we were in Europe. We did a, a nine day guided tour through Globus. And then we also did like, some traveling on our own. I have a friend that lives in Holland. So we went and visited her. We went and did a bunch of stuff in London on our own. So we flew in and out of London. Went to a bunch of different places in Europe. It was super fun. I learned a lot about different cultures. I learned a lot about Americans, to be honest. Like, you learn a lot about your own culture by going and comparing it to other cultures. So that was a cool experience. So we waited until after we got married to see how much money we got before we started planning our honeymoon. I'm getting a little fallout here. So I'm just going to wipe that away before I put concealer on top of that and it makes everything really dark. I wanted to see like how much we could do and like if we could do nice hotel rooms. So anyways, my parents helped us with plane tickets and which was really nice because they had already paid for a really extravagant wedding. I mean not really extravagant but I mean it was a nice wedding. So we arrived in London with the time difference and everything we left at night. We left from Phoenix Wednesday night and we got there in London Thursday afternoon. We did pretty good on the way there. We slept on the flight and Thursday we stayed up until bedtime so it wasn't super hard to adjust actually. We weren't like overly tired and you know you get so excited being on a trip and stuff. It wasn't it wasn't bad at all. When we arrived in London, one of the things that, that we basically went there for is to go to the Harry Potter Studios, which was amazing, but we'll get there. 
we decided to rent a car in London. For me personally, I felt like when I went there, I was going to have a lot of interaction with like cars being on the other side of the road. You just kind of assume that because London is that way, that there's a lot of other countries that are that way too. But in all honesty, London is the only one in Europe that pretty much drives on the wrong side of the road. So of course, when we need to rent a car, it has to be in London. And we had to rent a car twice. Ian did really good. He's a really good driver. And thank God for that because I'm a terrible driver. And if he wasn't driving, I don't know what. I, we, I would have paid an arm and a leg pretty much for a shuttle up there. That was an experience entirely of its own, I'm sure you can imagine. You do get used to it after a minute. I think he was starting to get the hang of it, but it wasn't so bad going out to like Harry Potter World because it is kind of like in the countryside. So it's not like enclosed spaces, you know? It's not like these compact little roads like it is in the city of London. So anyways. We drove out to the country to Harry Potter World and um, near there is an estate that used to house it's the Earls of Bridgeport were the Edgertons. Uh, they did not have a D so it was E-G-E-R instead of E-D-G. They had a very large estate so that was something Ian and I really wanted to see. We, we checked into our hotel first. It just so happened that the Harry Potter Studios was pretty close, like 25 minutes away. So after we checked into our hotel, we went out to Ash Ridge Estates. Right now it's actually a management college. I took a bunch of pictures in front. There's like a monument on part of the grounds. It was really cool. You weren't allowed to like go inside. They don't have visitors because it is like a college that's being used. like there were classes in session that day. I'm talking, you know, to the lady at the front desk and she's checking me out for, we got a couple postcards and like a little book. And I kind of, you know, just dropped like, oh yeah, we're at the Edgertons, we're on our honeymoon. And she goes, crikey, you must have some family history here then. Obviously she knows the place was owned by the Edgertons. She hesitated for a minute. At first she kind of was like, well, you could take a look around like the lobby here and it was just like a couple rooms and, and she looked at us again and she goes, all right, I'll give you guys some visitor badges, but you can't go into any of the rooms. You can really just go on into the grounds. And we were like, okay, <laughs> obviously like we wanted to see this place. So she gave us the visitor badges and we started exploring the grounds and it's actually very extensive. We found out it's 5,000 acres. We walked around for probably about 45 minutes, I would say. Barely, barely put a dent as far as like flowers, like they had an herb garden, have like hedge designs and stuff. They were like towards like the you know, middle back, I guess you could call it. And there's just lines and lines of trees as far as the eye can see. It was so pretty. And we are so grateful that this lady let us, you know, go because I don't know if we ever would have been able to see it otherwise. And it was like really a highlight of our trip. We had so much fun and it was a really nice like first thing to do. And then that night we had some fish and chips and some chambray. I don't know what it's called. It's like a melted cheese, like a round melted cheese. And you like pull off this like papery top kind of, and it's like all melted on the inside and you like dip stuff in it. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Never had it before. I had to look up what the word meant. And then we woke up the next day and we went to Harry Potter Studios and <sighs> you guys, it was so amazing. It was so amazing. If you ever get to London, I really suggest trying to get up there. Like it's, it, it's like a good hour and a half, two hours out of the city. So like it's not easy to get to, but if you have somebody that's like comfortable enough with driving, and it is stick too, like they don't have manual cars. It was so incredible. They have 
you know, like the chess pieces. They have the statue where Voldemort is in power and they have the ministry and the muggles are in their rightful place. They have that there. They have like a whole forbidden forest. They have the model of Hogwarts where they would do like all the panning shots and stuff. They have the original art. They have tons of costumes and props and like the invisibility cloak, the last outfits, the last scene outfits, uh, Hogwarts Express. Like, ugh. it was so amazing. You guys, like, oh, it's worth everything. Worth everything to go to that place. I'm just going to take a little concealer because I got to start putting the glitter on. I'm going to grab like a flat brush. I'm gonna carve this out. All right, so I'm just setting that really quick and then I am going to go in with my pencil brush and just kind of blend that a little. All right, so I got a little something like that going on. I'm gonna blend a little bit here. Then after, after Harry Potter Studios, we drove into London because the next day our tour kind of started. It was really just more like the check-in day, which we were already there. So we pretty much just spent like the entire day exploring London. We went to Westminster Abbey. We did the London Pass, which included a lot of different sites as well as a bus tour. So we used that for like transportation and stuff in London. The Westminster Abbey is bomb. It's so incredible to see. We had a really nice time there. And I'm gonna take this NYX pigment. Yeah, it looks like this. Super sparkly. Ooh, that, wow. Can you guys see that? Wow. You guys, this pigment is so cheap. That is so pretty. With the glitter glue, can you see that? That's a, just one little tap. How rude, Pigment, to interrupt my story. But whoa. Um, yes. Can you guys see that? I completely lost track of what I was saying because this pigment is so pretty. These are so cheap, you guys. And that is so pretty. I gotta do the other eye. Once we left London, we went on our way to Paris. And honestly, like, as far as cities go, Paris was our all-time favorite. It was clean, and it was pretty, and classy. The people were really nice to us. I I loved it so much. I loved Paris so much. I would go back there just and stay there for a week. Like We walked around one day for 10 hours and I still feel like I didn't see everything I wanted to see. Okay, so I got that glitter on and I kind of wiped away some of the fallout that happened but like look how pretty you guys i'm um, now i'm gonna just kind of blend this together so there's not a super harsh line so paris was definitely our all-time favorite city everywhere you went there was something cool to see there's gold plated everything we did not go into the louvre because we just really wanted to see the city. The museum is so big and I just I just didn't feel like we would do it justice, so like why try? But that's definitely something I would like to go back and see. We did not make it to Versailles either and that's one thing I would definitely like to do at some point. So Paris, we will be back. But we did see the Eiffel Tower. We went up the Eiffel Tower. That was included in our tour. We got some really good pictures of the Eiffel Tower. We got some really good pictures on the Eiffel Tower. We got some really good pictures on the Arc de Triomphe. Definitely lots of pictures in Paris. We got macaroons from La, La Madrid. Mm. Don't count me on that. 
I took pictures in front of the original Louis Vuitton. We even went in. They let you go in and just like look around. So we did that. Yeah, Paris was gorgeous. Our tour included um, travel from the cities, to and from the cities. So uh, from London to Paris, we took the train. And then from Paris, we were in a bus the rest of the time. Going to Switzerland uh, was our next stop. We were in Lucerne for one night. Ian and I had kind of decided to do our own dinner. My mom had told me about raclette, where they melt cheese. Like this special, actually it's raclette cheese, and that they melt and it like goes on your food, you know, like potatoes and bread. So that's definitely right up my alley, I like cheese and bread. Let's get some concealer on this face. So Switzerland was really pretty, um, I don't really want to talk about it, but we had a really nice dinner and then the next day we were supposed to go in this little, they called it a gondola, but it's basically like an enclosed ski lift. And it's like a small little pod, you're able to have two, three, or four people in one of these things. So the ladies in front of us were really nice, you guys go ahead, have a romantic ride, and then these two ladies like, in our group, like, you know, three or four people behind us come running up and get into our little gondola and then it's a 35 minute ride and we're fully romantic and like literally the only thing we would have been able to do on this guided tour alone was completely ruined by two old ladies so thanks for that. It was heartbreaking. I still obviously am very bitter about it. And then another thing is we thought, you know, okay so it's just the two of us and we'd be able to move around so we get in sitting across from each other. So now the whole time we're sitting across from each other instead of next to each other so Ian's like doing his best to get in front of this lady's pictures and <sighs> it was really disappointing. And you know there are just some really crappy people out there. This goes to show, if you see people on their honeymoon or you see people trying to do something romantic, don't butt in. That's so rude. Just let people do their thing. Like, I'm not running your vacation. Why are you running mine? Anyways, we got past it. We didn't let it ruin our vacation, but it was really upsetting. After Lucerne, we were in Bergamo, Italy. Just for one night, we had a really nice dinner there that was included with our tour. We were pretty much just there for one night. After Bergamo, we were in Venice. Ian and I both really, really disliked Venice. I don't think that we really got far enough. The streets are really confusing if you don't know where you're going and I just don't think that we got to like the untouristy part of Venice. The touristy part of Venice is awful. All the shops are the same, all the restaurants are the same. People are really rude. We wanted to get some lunch. We were starving and we literally walked around and around because nothing looked good. We finally found this restaurant that was like a sit down even though we knew we had dinner in a couple hours. So we just wanted to get something like small. We just wanted to try like a pasta or something. And like the waiter made such a big deal about us ordering one plate to split and that was it. He, like he wasn't gonna let us sit there. We ended up ordering two pastas, super full for dinner, like just because they were rude and forceful and like who cares if I sit down for five minutes? Like that's another thing, there's nowhere to sit in Venice, they're all like just looking to get your money and it's unfortunate but you know that wasn't my most favorite place in Italy. We did go to a glass factory in Venice and it's really nice, we got a really nice ornament so that part was nice but we were so glad we weren't actually staying in the city like where the water is, we were kind of like outside of Venice so we were really glad for that that we could just get out of there and never have to go back. So after Venice we were in Florence. Florence was really nice. In Florence we went to a leather factory and I got a really fabulous purse and they even did a free engraving so I got a really pretty like gold KLE on my purse. It's really awesome. So that was bomb. I have really bad posture. Have you guys noticed this? I'm like slouching and I gotta remind myself to sit up. Like girl, just sit straight. Sorry. So after Florence, we got to Rome. And Rome was the last stop on our guided tour and we saw the Colosseum. We went to the Vatican and that was all part of our tour. So if you do ever wanna go to Europe and you're not sure about how to get around and stuff like that, I really do suggest looking into a guided tour. We're about 
halfway through my honeymoon. We were gone for 17 nights. So I do have a lot to say about the honeymoon. After Rome, we flew into Amsterdam. We had a late flight in. We're, we're going to Amsterdam to visit. I have a friend that lives in Holland. She lives in Valvik, which is a little town about an hour out of Amsterdam. We met at camp. I was a camp counselor in college. And my summer after freshman year, we met. So I was like 21, maybe 20. Clicked right away. Just the sweetest person. Like, I love her so much. I wish we lived closer. She has two little boys, one's six and one's almost two, I think. So we stayed in Amsterdam that night. I'm just gonna bronze with this little hourglass. This is the radiant bronze light. So we stayed in Amsterdam for the night and then the next day, Jess is my friend. She picked us up. <clears throat> And she took us to Zanzéchance, which is a little like mini city almost of windmills. So that was fun to see. I don't really like the way that looks right here. So yeah, she, uh, she took us to the windmills and they have like all these different types of factories. Like they have the little wooden shoe factory. They have like a diamond, like where they make jewelry. You can go in the windmills and they have windmills that like do different things like minerals, paint, like flour and grains. So that was really fun. I liked it and then she took us home and the next day she took us to Little Europe in Brussels, Belgium, which was super fun. They basically have just like little mini versions of the buildings and little towns and cities and all the different countries in Europe. There's a lot of different buildings from Amsterdam and Holland, but then they also had like something from literally every country in Europe, even like the really small ones that you've never heard of. So that was really fun. And we took her little boy, Misha. He's so cute. His little pants. I loved his little pants. He's like a little mini version of his dad. It's so cute. And then we pretty much had to leave her because we were going back to London. Our second to last night in London, we stayed in Leeds Castle. It was super cool. And they have like a maze, they have like a falcon reunit, they had like a falcon show. You can do tours of the castle. We stayed there. Area with rooms, so you're not like in the castle actually, you're just outside the moat on the grounds. They built a little hotel. It was one of the highlights of our trip. We loved Leeds Castle. So if you ever have a chance, I really do suggest Leeds Castle. If you stay there, the tickets into the castle and the grounds and stuff were all free. Then after Leeds, we pretty much were done. We went to our hotel the last night was by the airport. I figured it'd be nice for us to just kind of chill out, get some rest before we had to fly home. So that is the whole honeymoon. That was a really long story. I'm really sorry. But it was 17 days worth of crap. It was crazy. We got so many pictures and we have so many memories and best trip ever. Question of the day. If you guys could travel anywhere, where would you go? I just miss my friend so much. I wish I could go back to Holland. I miss her. I miss you, boo. Miss you. Okay, looking a little crazy. Gonna do my brows. I'm using the Goof Proof Brow Pencil in the shade four. Using precisely my brow in three. Clear brow gel in the 24 hour brow setter all by Benefit. I mean, I'm just gonna do this off camera. You don't need to see this. Okay, so I I actually changed my mind about the clear brow gel. I'm gonna go through a little gimme brow in the shade three. Now let's 
let's move on to the under eye. I like to take a flat shader brush first, and I'm gonna go in with the darkest color that I used on my eyes. Probably a mixture of that and the black. And then I'm gonna run it under my eyes. And I don't like to go all the way in with the really dark color. I think it kind of closes off my eye a little bit. See how I fixed that up a little bit there? This is the Sigma one. I'm gonna take a little bit of the two lighter brown shade. I'm gonna blend that black. Okay, so then I'm gonna take a little bit of a fluffier, that orange shade. I'm gonna blow this out. Don't be afraid to get under your eye bag. You know, like the wrinkles in your eyes because they can really help hide that. I was here Samantha Randall, I think is how she says it. The Canadian. I was here her say, let me take that under my eye bag. Love it. Dust away. That baking. I like to use a big powder brush. Just sweeps it away. I'm gonna use a bit more bronzer. So I'm gonna take this. bad. Now for some blush. I think I'm gonna go for this shimmery one. I am going to go ahead and do lashes. These are the Ardell Demi Wispies. I basically cut a large section off so that they're almost a half lash. Okay, just because for a party I like to be pretty comfortable with my eyelashes. I don't want to feel like my eyes are heavy at a party. The Duo Lash Glue, the brush on with vitamins. This is non-latex, I believe. I'm going to pop on some of my tardiest mascara. I'll be back. So... I'm doing my mascara. All hell is breaking loose. Look what I did. I got eyeliner up there, mascara. All hell is breaking loose, you guys. I poked myself in the eye. I friggin' smudged my eyeliner. All hell is breaking loose. So, naturally, I thought I'd turn on the camera so y'all can watch that all hell breaks loose sometimes, okay? There's still ways to fix it. Hang in there. Even, even if your eye looks like this, you can fix it. That sucks. Witness the disaster happening. I'll zoom you right in. Breaking A, look it. Look at that. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. <sighs> I'm gonna have to fix my eyeliner. Do you guys do eyeliner? How do you do it without getting it on your eyelashes? Ugh. Okay, we're just gonna try to leave it there. See? We well, can clean it up, you guys. The Artist Couture Diamond Glow Powder in Illuminati. It's really pretty. Tap off the excess. I'm gonna wet my brush. And pop it on my cheeks. And then I also have a little sample of Sin by Urban Decay, which I have in my little Z palette. Notice I did not wet it for this stuff. Woo, that's a lot highlight. So I'm just going to spritz my face. I'm going to take my beauty blender, the flat side. I'm 
and pounce the rest of my face just to make sure everything is sunk in and flat. See how I blended that highlight out? So this is what I got going on so far and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I do have a little bit of the plumping lip gloss from Buxom in the shade Alyssa. Rub that off. I like to use a little bit of a lip plumper. Can't hurt. You don't want to have like butt lips, so get in there, y'all. I'm not afraid to make the weird faces. We all make weird faces. Sometimes you gotta get in there. I don't want to have butt lips. <clears throat> and my trick. Okay, so this is Kylie Cosmetics, Mary Jo K but I love to blot with this. And I feel like it helps with like the chunkiness that can happen down there. All right guys, so this is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed getting ready with me and learned something about me today. Sorry I rambled about my honeymoon, but it was so amazing. So I'm glad I got to share that with you. See ya. Hold on, there's something white on my eye. What is this? It's lash glue from last weekend. I literally have lash... I'm literally pulling lash glue off from last weekend. That's bad. My hands are so dirty right now. I need to clean them up. Just clean them up.